Uh, namaste, Kamila. Welcome to namaste. Ahimsa Conversations. Thank you so much for making time. Uh, I, I thank you. So, Kamila, what is your earliest memory of either the idea or the experience of nonviolence? Um, as my childhood uh, was in Germany in the 60s, you know, and not many years were passed after, after World War II. Now we know it was only 20 years, 15 years when I was a child in Germany. Um, I think, uh, unfortunately, that violence uh, was what I knew first. Uh, the, the knowing about World War II and, and and was uh, was uh, and what national socialism in Germany in all over Europe did, uh, uh, and so my idea of nonviolence was very strong because I was like many children, I think, shocked by what I knew the first time about that huge, huge terror and violence. Uh, what uh, was uh, the the effect of, of this uh, um, ideology of uh, of national yeah. socialism? Yeah. And so, how did, so how, yeah. no, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. No, uh, I think that's uh, that's it. So sure, we learned at school other <laughs> important theories, and we know we knew about Gandhi, obviously, uh, and I felt that this was the right uh, way. Uh, uh, but I very soon was uh, um, addressed with uh, with that uh, terrible period of uh, fascism and national socialism. Yeah. So this must be a credit to the school system, I suppose, that you knew about Gandhi at such a young age. Uh, but what you uh, not before the age of twelve? Yes, not before. But yes, we know. Yes. And we Gandhi know. meant nonviolence. Sure. Am I right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was a great idea. Important. <laughs> so, when you grew up and became a historian, how did you come to focus on the importance of memory? Because that is your main work that yes. why it is important to remember yes uh, you can remember only what you know <laughs> so memory is important but more important is the knowledge about what happened and history so memory comes after and so my whole what i do always is trying to explain uh, trying to explain <laughs> and uh, and to let young people know what happened uh, during World War II. And then, yes, memory and uh, try to tell people, and not only young people, adults at, as well, uh, that uh, how it was said that if you don't remember what happened, you are obliged uh, to live it, uh, live it another time. So memory is uh, is a uh, is not only important. Uh, you you must <laughs> do it. I think people uh, should um, should tell us why they don't uh, have memory uh, and not the opposite. I, I yeah. should not tell people why I uh, need uh, for everyone. Uh, memory. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if, I, if it was clear, but I think um, memory is the only thing, and uh, we we can do we can do not to repeat. Yes, uh, yes. that so uh, horrible things. In mm. this emphasis on remembering and and uh, knowing, firstly, and then uh, remembering. Do you also engage with why it happened? Because that has always been now, I think, for more than 80 years, the question that has haunted people uh, across yes. the world, I think, not yes. just in Germany or in Italy and the countries sure, that why? suffer. Why? Sure. How, did, how did such um, 
incredible uh, human suffering come to be justified? So uh, this is a huge uh, question and, and I uh, would need many hours to, <laughs> to answer to it. Um, but sure, we try to, to give answers uh, and the reasons are not only one or two, are many, many reasons. Now in history, uh, <laughs> history is very complex and to, to explain why national socialism came up in Germany, um, you have to know German history before and many aspects of German history. Uh, the, the Prussian militarism, the, uh, the, what happened with World War uh, I, <laughs> and, uh, and not only historical reasons, but ph philosophical, uh, social, economic reasons as well. Uh, so you cannot say it with a word. What, but one thing I am really sure is not the reason, and many people think so. So you have to do it. It's not because a bad, bad man came along. Uh, his name was Adolf Hitler, and then everything happened. And without that man, nothing would have, uh, would have happened. And this not, it's too easy. Sure, he had a function, uh, but it's, it is, you cannot explain everything only by the uh, ugly uh, behavior of one, uh, of one or two or three men because it, it could not be possible uh, that way. So uh, we have to explain about complexity of, uh, of historical developments uh and that what what we do and the uh, the me i don't uh and, and 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 how and we try to see how it it could uh not in the same way never something happens in the same way <laughs> history but similar things could happen if the conditions are similar to to the conditions in that times yeah yeah that's Thank you. And so what was the journey that led you to Prato, where you are now director of the museum and the center of documentation for deportation and resistance? Uh, if you could first tell us how you came to that role and then please oh, sure. walk us through what is what is the museum about and what yeah, is the sure, experience sure. you have created? Oh, I there. came to, I, I already told you that I was grown up in Germany and for me, uh, since my youngest childhood, uh, uh, this theme, I was shocked about it. And uh, as I was, I was not a German, but I lived there. Um, my father uh, and my mother were both journalists. Uh, so they had a, a lot to do with, uh, with this uh, themes, with politics, with what happened. Uh, and so I, I knew about it. Um, then I came to Florence. Uh, Prato is only 20 kilometers uh, from Florence. So I live, uh, actually, I live still in Florence, but I work in Prato. It's, it's not far. Um, and uh, after I studied uh, history uh, at university, uh, but still before, I, uh, I was very close to former uh, former concentration camps prisoners survivors but they, they were not jews because as maybe many know uh, uh, the what everybody knows the best and and it was uh, uh, this uh, incredible horrible thing uh, the the holocaust and the extermination of more of six million European Jews, uh, Jews. Um, it was not only this uh, was the uh, the uh, the situation of concentration camps because many people were deported, uh, many people for political reasons as well because they were opponents of the Nazi fascists, and that was the reason. And in Prato, there were survivors uh, like the grandfather of, uh, of Mao Valpiana. Uh, they were uh, not Jews, but they were opponents. Uh, uh, and they, they um, were deported uh, from, um, 
and not only it was not only the guilt of of the Germans, but Italian fascists as well arrested them uh, to Mauthausen concentration camp. Um, and I knew some of them of uh, survivors, uh, and they knew they knew that I spoke German. And so they said, and this is very interesting for nonviolence as well, because they asked me in the 80s, so we have more than 30 years ago, in the 80s, they asked me, these uh, survivors, to help them to get in touch with the, uh, with the people of um, Austrian village where the concentration camps were. Uh, it was Ebensee, one of the sub camps of Mauthausen, the a uh, well-known concentration camp, uh, because they, they, they said, the survivors, we want to uh, get in touch with people obviously born after the war, not themselves SS or, or Nazis, but born after for a better future, we say, they said. And it was incredible view of them to say, we want a gemelage, a partnership between our town, our city of Prato, where the most of the victims for political reasons, deportees came from, and the place where we were deported and where we suffered and where many, most of us died. <laughs> it was really incredible that they had this uh, need to, to get in touch with people there, uh, obviously always on the basis of truth. Huh? And so I, I, I it was, it's, it's very important because I, with my, uh, as an, in that time, as an interpreter, I uh, did my best to, uh, to put together these two, the survivors of concentration camp and the citizen of the place where the concentration camp was. And now, since 1987, there exists really a, a, a twinship, a partnership between these two places. And we were, and now I know that maybe that was the first time in Europe that uh, something like this happened. The, 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 no, uh, on the background was the horror of Second World, World War II, of the concentration camp. But people said, we want a better future. We want a dialogue. We want to speak. We want uh, friendship be between um, countries, between. Uh, and I think it was a very good idea. And, and, uh, but uh, there was no place for fake news, for, for false things to say. Because you know, uh, in Austria, people, and in Germany, and in Italy as well, Many people said, we didn't know about it. It was not uh, like you say, no, the survivors, obviously, survivors obviously wanted the truth. Uh, and on the uh, basis of, of the truth, what happened really, now we can have friendship, why now, now we can have dialogue. This was what be the beginning. But then uh, the, uh, the survivors had two aims, <laughs> very important. One was the partnership between their hometown and uh, the, uh, the, the town they were de deported to. Um, and the other important thing they wanted was a museum. They said, and so the museum came not from politics or some, it comes, how you say, I'm not sure that's what it, it's right to say down from down, why mm -hmm. you should say the people's yeah. down, but you say normally so, from down to up to, uh, uh, survivors said, we need a place, we need uh, um, a, a place, a permanent place, like a museum, where, uh, we, where people speak about what happened to us, it, because it would be one time and we are not alive anymore. And uh, unfortunately, now we have this period when uh, survivors are not with us anymore, only a very, very, very few of them are yeah. still alive. And so they had a great idea to say, we need a museum, we need uh, a documentation center. Uh, and that's why uh, in the meantime, I studied <laughs> history at university 
Uh, and so uh, I um, contributed to found the museum. So 20 years ago, now it's uh, in April 2022, it's exactly 20 years. Uh, and so I, I tried to do my best together with them because they had a, a story to, <laughs> to tell, an uh, important, terrible story to tell to, together with the survivors and with important historians uh, at that time, we, we um, founded this museum. Uh, and, and that's the way I came to it. <laughs> For, when I was younger, as an interpreter in this idea of remelage, of partnership, um, and then uh, we, and we call it partnership of peace, the partnership of peace. It's a, exactly the name of this Prato Ebensee partnership. And after hours, I think, came others in Tuscany, uh, in Italy, and in Europe as well. Others with the same background. Mm. And now the, the museum, you want to know about the museum? the museum? No, I wanted to ask you before we move to the museum, sure. how did those people in the other place, you know, the as the, the residents the around yes. what were once concentration camps, mm -hmm. people who were born after that horror had been committed, how did those people respond? I'm, I'm curious to know uh, if you yes. got any resistance there. Uh, yes. Um, I think it was uh, needed uh, that a new generation came along, <laughs> not that a generation that uh, in so somehow, in some way was guilty. Uh, and not only guilty because they were really active in the terror, uh, and, uh, but being maybe indifferent, not not doing anything against it is a guilt as well we know today no or even being yeah. the children of people or the grandchildren yes. of people who committed the crimes so uh, the idea of a partnership was accepted by a young mayor that's a word in english yes, yes. Uh, he was a social dem social democrat uh, austrian social democrat his name was rudolf graf and he understood immediately that it was a really an incredible uh, possibility to address um, this terrible past for them. Uh, <laughs> this possibility was given by survivors. So he took this uh, occasion, he said, okay, thank, thank you. Now we can try uh, to 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 speak about all that it was not easy. So he had a it was a he was young and other uh, young uh, relatively young people like him. Well, uh, for them it was okay. It was they suffered about this because they knew that that their parents were guilty as well. Not not in the same way obviously, but somehow. Uh, but they knew it was the right way for a new Europe, for a way of dialogue and, and peace. Not everybody uh, was um, uh, like, not for everybody it was okay. Many of them feared the reaction of, uh, of Italians. Others said, oh, why come the Italians uh, and do uh, and behave like victims? They were they was as well uh, not fascist so it was a fascist country but in this uh, uh, and we got we, we, we had to to stand to this uh, we had to, to, to speak about it how Italy was has a double face has uh, because we have uh, uh, obviously, like I told you, um, the, <laughs> the fascism was uh, invented in, in Italy, uh, and we had a, a dictatorship in Italy, and we were allied to uh, to Hitler's Germany, um, but we had a strong resistance as well, and many, many anti-fascists, and many victims, because and this is a bit complicated because you have to know Italian history, you know. Uh, at eighth of uh, Sept September eighth of nineteen forty three, Italy uh, signed an armistice with the Allied, 
it was no longer uh, allied with uh, Nazi Germany. Uh, and so everything changed from then. Uh, and and, and uh, the Nazis, the Germans, occupied central and northern Italy. And then they were very angry about Italy and they and there were massacres, deportations in Italy. So uh, many Italians died uh, by massacres of, of German national socialists and were deported as well. And obviously Italian Jews, because like everywhere Ita uh, Jews were deported. Um, and so Italy, you can say, has a double face because uh, is uh, was uh, uh, a country um, uh, where of the of the uh, uh, of re of resistance of fascism and of victims of, as well. So everything, uh, and so that's what we told to the Austrian. Uh, friends uh, uh, and and we knew we knew we, we we should we should write a new a new story now <laughs> a new def different story now uh, and, and and I think it was uh, uh, accepted by most of the people there uh, not the elder one for obvious reasons of uh, their uh, uh, because they, they were involved in everything. Uh, but the younger uh, accepted this new way of peace and understanding and dialogue. Uh, so the, uh, now I come to the museum. <laughs> yes, yes. If you could just, in a sense, walk us through what is the experience uh, that you have aimed to create uh, at the museum? Uh, um, uh, yes, we want to tell a story, first of all, very easily the story you couldn't tell uh, and say this and this and this happened exactly. You know that facts are strong. Facts are really strong, stronger of that words, that ideologies. You say what happened and that we try to do. Uh, and we have um, objects in our museum, uh, objects coming from uh, the concentration camp in Ebensee, that one I told you, um, because there's another aspect people don't uh, speak about every <laughs> often enough. Concentration camps were not only it were p places of murder and death, but it's not only gas chambers, not only crematoriums. Uh, concentration camps were places of slave labor and it's very important but it was not only uh, racism hatred and destroying people it was uh, as well uh, um, you had to uh, let them work for for very <laughs> for utility for for the ec economy of of uh, nazi germany uh, and so the, the objects we have in our museum are objects uh, uh, which, um, which tell us about the slave labor in concentration camp. And so you see how many themes we can address. Uh, we can speak about not only anti-Semitism, racism, hatred, but we speak as well about slave labor, about uh, uh, how uh, German, Nazi Germany uh, tried to let people work for them as slaves and die by working. Um, millions of people, that's what they did. People don't know, but <laughs> we can say in that many, a few years, in 12 years, from 1933 to 1945, when the war ends, uh, in Germany, in Nazi Germany, in the Third Reich, there uh, worked uh, 26 million of people uh, for uh, deported people from everywhere in Europe. Uh, they worked in their own countries, in the occupied countries for Germans and in German, deported in Germany for German uh, war economy. War economy. So this was so forced, that, forced labor. Forced labor, yes. We prefer slave labor, labor because forced labor is less than 
you can imagine less Understood. than what they did. Yes, because yes. forced labor is terrible, and they did. But uh, slave labor um, is when you have uh, no right at all. Yes. You are only yeah. a, a, a body working, suffering, and dying. Yeah, to yeah. work. That's exactly what it was. Uh, so it, yes, but you can say first labor, but I want only to, to let no, no, it's an important point. Thank you, thank you for the that clarification. Very, very important uh, uh, difference, and um, and so our museum speaks a, a lot about this aspect of Nazi concentration camp, um, uh, and so you see uh, in our museum these objects of uh, of uh, workforce. Uh, and then uh, you see uh, the the jacket, you know, with the stripes uh, and the and the um, wood shoes uh, of the uh, of the prisoners, uh, and the um, and what the SS used uh, to to beat them at that this uh, things um, and, uh, and and what they had to eat. But uh, if you see in our website the, the, the pictures of, of, of the museum, uh, um, the visitor has to know that, uh, that, that uh, these objects has a symbolical function. Uh, they mean something. It's not only uh, what we really are, but what we stand for, what they stand for. Uh? And um, and then very important in the museum, we have a, a, um, a presentation, a video presentation, with um, interviews with survivors. Uh, and so uh, you see the object, but you hear the voices uh, of the survivors and what what they said about their being in the concentration camp. What was uh, the first impression as they when they arrived? Uh, what was the everyday life uh, at everyday death in concentration camp? The, the the hard hard work. What was the cruelty of SS and of capos? And and they speak about about it. What was uh, some um, episodes of, of of help between them? Uh, but even the opposite uh, of uh, uh, of not helping one another, uh, why, uh, uh, each uh, 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 you know uh, when you have when you are hungry, uh, it's difficult to give your uh, food to others. No, and yeah. so we we know, as you know, um, the concentration camps were somehow an experiment of the best and the worst. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. was interesting. Uh, it was important for this reason. And, and so uh, when we um, uh, when we lead our our school classes through our museums, uh, they are normally shocked. We don't want to shock them because it's it's not um, it's not it's it's more important that they remain clear in their mind and they understand, but it's not possible to avoid emotion because what happened there happened to human beings and was uh, so, so horrible. So you have to find a very difficult um, uh, um, uh, equilibrio, <laughs> the word in English comes so Equilibrium? Equilibrium, thank you. Uh -huh. Equilibrium, you have to find a very important equilibrium uh, between emotion mm -hmm. and your mind, yeah. your understanding, yeah. Your, yeah. your thinking. Yeah. So, yeah. And only in this equilibrium, I think, and we try to, to give this, because emotion is not enough. No. Emotion must be, but you have to understand why. Uh, and then you can you can yeah. try to give an answer and to try new ways. Yes. So yes. this is a museum uh, in the uh, in two in two big halls. Uh, the first hall I don't tell didn't tell you, not where the objects are, but they are 
uh, okay, historical uh, panels where you can read uh, about the NS concentration camp system. It's, it's, it's a bit complicated, but it's important to know how they did uh, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and upstairs, we have a documentation center uh, and we have a video room uh, and conference room and a, and a library. Um, with many, many books, very uh, specific uh, about the theme. Uh, and so, but uh, in, in last year, we didn't, we didn't have many uh, school classes because of the pandemic. So of course, uh, we did, uh, uh, we did uh, with the classes, uh, uh, we call it that didattica distanza, that means uh, like we do now, <laughs> but it's not um, with the children, you have to speak with them and I hope all this will end to continue or or work with uh, with pupils in the future. Wonderful. And around you over say over the last uh, 10 20 years do you feel that we can safely say that a fascism type of uh, horror is in the past or is it a still a current is it a future threat? Hmm. Uh, how I said, uh, um, because you know, many of us are shocked to see the scale of the rallies which neo Nazis are taking out in Germany. Uh, and from a distance, uh, those of us who are outside hmm. Europe are completely baffled yeah. that you know, how sure. is this happening? Yes, um, hmm. Like I uh, as I told you before, uh, I don't think that uh, history can really repeat like it was. It's not possible because conditions are different and, and the situation uh, in the world is different. Uh, what we are really shocked that people can have that try to find in that ideology something uh, interesting for himself, for the future, that's for us, in. Uh, impossible to accept and to understand as well. Uh, the reason for that, uh, maybe I know better for Italy, but for Germany as well. When you see in Germany, it's mostly in the Eastern uh, Länder, in the region of former Eastern Germany. And they said, yes. wow, oh, I, how it's possible. Because there was um, a difficult uh, process of uh, unification. Uh, and and, and, what, and I think it involved a lot of economic suffering. Yes, economic suffering. Uh, um, and you know, if there is an economic problem, hmm, uh, people uh, ha has, uh, has not enough uh, money. So there is a, somehow a, a kind of envy, envy? Uh, to, uh, envy, no. envy, yes, envy, yes. Envy. Oh, sorry, envy. sorry, envy. There's a yeah. kind of envy, social envy, uh, but something <laughs> you can, this is possible to understand. Uh, and you, and as it was in Germany, you look for an enemy, a figure of an enemy. And who are normally the enemies, the weaker one, the poor one? Uh, they don't know, they don't see the enemy where, should, where they should see them huh? and I, I think we know now it, it's an economic uh, situation and uh, uh, the capitalism still very strong and often without uh, <laughs> thinking really about <laughs> the, the poor um, so they are not looking for the real enemies but look uh, where uh, people, they say uh, steal their uh, work uh, place uh, and steal, mm -hmm. and so and and and, and through this uh, figure of an enemy, um, we have that that ideologies of uh, the stronger one, uh, the the superior race, and we are the better, and the others uh, should uh, be. Uh, should uh, so it's not enough to explain i know i know it's really not enough it's a very complicated and complex 
situation, but maybe something like that happened. And the not the the non-memory, not knowing what really happened. Uh, if you ask the neo-Nazis or the neo-fascists, what's re what really happened? Sometimes they, they even don't really know. Huh? Yeah. Uh, but it's it's uh this they that they are slogans, uh, uh, political on 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 the web on the web. Uh, um, so it, it it is yeah difficult to say. Uh, the problem is not only neo-fascism and neo-nazism. The, the the problem is that the world is not going uh, well. That there are still very rich people and very poor people, and uh, yeah. and uh, the, the the military expenses uh, grow and grow and grow. Uh, that that uh, why I uh, I don't want to be disappointed, but sometimes. I am together with many other friends who thought 20 years ago that a better world yeah. <laughs> could come. And yeah. So how do people who still believe in nonviolence, how, how do they keep their morale up? How do you continue uh, you know, to work for it? Because uh, there is a lot of effort across Europe I mean, there may be small groups, but they are there who are working yeah. for nonviolence. So how do we see that then? Uh, for me, I think because there's no other choice. There's no other choice than nonviolence because why violence and war brings why other violence and war. We saw it in history. And so we can say it uh, now. So uh, we are disappointed and we see uh, how strong is uh, the, the economic interest of huge groups, economic groups, and how maybe it, it is uh, terrible to know that the exp military expense, uh, expenses grow and grow. <laughs> In, and and we we thought it, it could come in a new tendency, a different tendency, and and it's yeah. not so. Uh, we has a very important uh, priest uh, in Italy. Maybe you know him, Alex Zanotelli. Zanotelli. Mm -hmm. uh, he was very important for us in the nonviolence and peace movement twenty years ago. Um, <clears throat> And uh, and he he's, he speaks always about the facts. And fact is that all over the world they spend uh, one thousand eight hundred, I think, billions of dollars for military expense. And in in Italy, twenty seven billions. In nineteen in two hundred twenty, in the year of the pandemic, when you 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 could you have it were, it were better to to spend. Uh, this money for the for the health system and not for military expenses, and, uh, and and people sometimes don't know these facts. But if you know them, <laughs> we it's very difficult to think uh, that. But it's not impossible, <laughs> but yeah. difficult to think that yeah. we can do really something against that. Yeah. It's very difficult. I'm so sorry to see to say this. No, and, no. And, and, it's I, the I reality. Not, <laughs> but yeah. this is the reality. But yeah. I, 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 I say what more. I thought we have no other choice than nonviolence. So, yeah. for me, we must try to go, go ahead. So, as someone who has spent so much of her life working on these ideals, what advice would you give, Camilla, in closing? What advice would you give to young people today? And I, I meet many young people who want to walk this path of nonviolence. So, what would you say to them, both in terms of their inner journey? See, because you have to build inner strength. Only then you can stay on the course. And both, you know, so in inner and outward, what advice would you give to them? Stay together. Don't stay the whole day in front of the video or the smartphone. Stay together. Speak with your friends. 
uh, meet with your friends and with other maybe you can tell you and speak with you and give you some advice and, and, and uh, this this is the most important thing in our time and it's but unfortunately we don't go in that direction because I know children or young people always at home and the pandemic did not help with that at home looking the video okay we can talk through the video as well like we do now uh, but it's not always th that way uh, so be together speak understand and want to know be curious as i told you it's true for the history but it's true for our uh, life and our world our actual wor uh, world um, know the facts you have to when you hear, hear politicians uh, talk uh, don't believe everything they say but uh, try to know by yourself facts uh, if 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 you know that they spend in all over the world 1900 billions for military expenses and not for the health during the pandemic that must be for you <laughs> a very important information uh, so you can you must try to 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 find a fight against all this and you can do it cannot do it alone you have to be, to be together with others and with others all over the world because if you are fine uh, you cannot be fine if you know that people in other places of the world are not and suffer so <laughs> sometimes i tell to, to the people's coming to the museum when I see them, uh, sometimes they, they cry when they hear the stories of the victims of National Socialism. And I, it, and I suffer for them for 14, 15 years old uh, boys and girls. And then I feel bad that I, sh I, I tell him that uh, the human being is a murderer, always was, human being. <laughs> and it's for me terrible to have to tell them this. But then I say to them, we, we tell you all this, not to make you hate the life, but to love it more. But not only your own life, it is normal that you love your own life. You have to love the life of everyone, of every woman, every man, of every children, all over the world. This is the way, uh, and I tell you, about these horrible things only for that for make you love the life so moving thank you so much